From Tatooine to Mustafa, the best of the Yadda Rim, it's the one and only Star Bazaar, yeah. This was the update we were looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Star Bazaar. I hope you've been enjoying the Battle of Geonosis update just like I have been. DICE knocked this one way, way out of the park, and any expectations I had for it were met and exceeded. The new map is vast, detailed, and in my opinion looks better than the movie, the new vehicles are a blast to use, and the new hero has filled a hole that has been there since Battlefront 2015. In today's video, we're talking about all of it, why this update is amazing, why DICE is amazing, and how I think Battlefront 2 is basically saved. Let's check it out. I don't want to drag this video out too long, but I do want to showcase some cool Obi-Wan Kenobi gameplay I managed to capture since I completely crashed and slept through the release of the update and didn't get to stream any of it. This works a bit better though because here you can see some gameplay where I actually kind of know what I'm doing with him. As always, my videos are also a discussion involving all of you, so let's start it off down below in the comments with the topic of Obi-Wan's abilities. Let me know which one of his abilities is your favorite so far, because though they're mostly recycled concepts, they're actually incredibly unique. In fact, he's a pretty good starting point for this video because I've been spending as much time as I can practicing with him and figuring his playstyle out. In my opinion, Obi-Wan is outstanding as a hero. He's definitely easier to get the hang of than General Grievous was, and all of his abilities work really well. I've now gotten to the point where I can consistently get 30 plus killstreaks with Obi-Wan, and he's quickly becoming one of my favorite heroes to use all around. Defensive Rush is definitely my new favorite hero ability, as rushing into a group of enemies and one-shotting all of them is the single most satisfying thing in Battlefront 2 right now. Let's talk about his health regeneration real quick, because it is insane. He has 300 base regeneration, and with his Jedi Resilience star card maxed out, that becomes 400. Which means, if he walks away from any confrontation with 350 health or more, he's recovering back to full. That is unheard of, and is only matched by General Grievous' 350 health regeneration. He's great in Galactic Assault, and fairly decent in Heroes vs. Villains. He's not a tank like Vader, but he's definitely a sponge and is very comfortable on the front lines supporting his troops either blocking or absorbing damage. Despite all these positives about Obi-Wan, he isn't perfect and he does have a few bugs that need to be addressed. His attacks don't seem to have the same satisfying smash as other sabers do, and his block also seems to have an issue where certain things can break through it resulting in him taking damage. His movements also bug out sometimes when he contacts certain terrain elements, as you can see in this clip where I was dueling Maul and I got stuck in this weird blocking animation and couldn't move until Maul hit me with an ability. He's still fresh though, and as more players feel him out and give their feedback, I'm sure these problems and more will be addressed in a future update. On the topic of problems that got addressed though, General Grievous is now a machine with fully working abilities and a terrifying new look. The flaming particles coming off his new skin are so badass, and his abilities have not failed me yet. Thrust Surge can sometimes have issues if your target moves out of range, but you no longer get stuck in a silly animation, and it will now very reliably hit targets that are in range, even if they're jumping in the air. Unrelenting Advance is also very satisfying to use. It blocks basically everything like it's supposed to, and just chops up anyone foolish enough to stand in front of you while the ability is active. Grievous has a lot going for him after this update, and he's definitely my favorite villain to use by a long shot. Let's talk about the new map next, because DICE blew me away, and I'm sure everyone else away with how much detail went into the Geonosis Galactic Assault map. The size and scale of it feels like an authentic experience on the planet, and I have to say, it looks better in the game than it did in Episode 2. Every little detail is so spot on, and my hat is truly off to DICE for putting this map together. The player base waited 12 months for a new Galactic Assault experience, and I'd say we got our weight's worth. When it comes to gameplay, it is a very unique Galactic Assault mission. Though I do think it's awesome and a really nice shakeup of content, it's honestly not really my playstyle. It's very vehicle oriented, which makes sense as the ATTEs are the most important part of the match, but I'm just not really a vehicle player. I will say, the new clone tanks are a lot of fun though, and the more you play the map, the more you come to realize just how important the speeders are to get from one side to the other, another testament to just how big this battlefront is. Snipers also have found their new playground. Geonosis is a specialist's paradise, especially one who's got the NT with disruptor shot equipped. 
I finished one game top of the leaderboards with a good 5,000 points on the second place player, all because of the amount of ATTEs I was able to take out with that disruptor shot. And that was after the server side change DICE implemented to the walker's health. Yeah, that's right. DICE buffed the ATTE's health by 2,000 due to feedback that the clones had a really hard time getting past phase 2. DICE heard feedback and implemented a change real quick, which should be expected for an update of this size, but is still very pleasing to see nonetheless because it shows the care and dedication they have for this game and its players. For that reason, they are awesome, and in this video they get my full praise for bringing us this update and everything that came with it. In summary, with this update, I really think Battlefront 2 is saved, and I say that from the perspective of someone who may have thought Battlefront 2 was a dead game, or at least headed in that direction. Personally, I don't believe that, and never did. This game has too strong of a cult Star Wars fanbase for it to die completely, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't at least worried about the future. After this update, I have no worries left, and the talk coming from the development side makes it sound like 2019 is going to be the turnaround year for Battlefront 2. We have Earl Dooku and Anakin Skywalker coming in just a few months to join our new Clone Wars heroes, and I cannot wait for all the other surprises DICE has in store for us. That will do it for this video though. Before you go, let me know how you feel about the Battle of Geonosis update in a comment. Do you love it, hate it, or are you indifferent? Personally, I think it's just what the game needed, and I'm happy I get to be a part of this great game and community. I appreciate you all stopping by the bazaar. This has been your boy, Turkish Delight, and I will see you all out on the battlefront. Peace. Magic carpet ride. My name is hard to pronounce, so call me Turkish Delight. I'm killing the track with all the homies on the mic. Hope they don't mind the hope of self promotion. It's in motion tonight. The mix they drop in soon, probably in mid June. Just in time for summer and all of the available corn. In the meantime, I'ma roll it up tight. The food is up, I'm about to sing this with pride.